In yesterday's video, we specifically focused on special illustration words, and today we're focusing just on the illustration words. We're going to jump straight into this. We're going to pretty much touch on everything, and I'm going to give some of my future predictions, which is something I don't normally do, but it was kind of popular in the last video, so we'll be talking about the future of some of these cards moving forward. Now, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, I do daily content, pretty much uh, one to sometimes two pieces of content every single day, and... Back on May 17th and May 20th, I made two different videos, and we were talking about some of the sleeper hits, and I just wanted to touch on those real quick before we dive into everything else, because some of those cards that I picked are here. First off is the Steelix. Now, if you guys want to go back, I released it on May 17th, and this card was at $13. So just to give myself a little bit of uh, pats on the back, $13, and it had a run up where it almost doubled and went up to $25, and even at $22, we're seeing huge gains on the Steelix here. The median price is at 24, so uh, this might pop up um, a little bit here. Might have another little climb, but I did call the Steelix, so um, just wanted to point that out there. Then in the uh, May 20th video, which would have put it around here, I we talked about the Yvelt doll, uh, which was you know seven bucks, and now we are over doubled. We're at 17 dollars, so. Um, I didn't hit on every single one of those cards, but I didn't like miss on all of them either. But I'm just we're just talking about a few of the examples of some of the cards that I had picked, uh, you know, doing some work. So I just wanted to give myself some credit there. Uh, next up is the Arbok, which uh, was on the 20th as well, uh, which would have put that right here. So it was around four dollars. While not the biggest dollar gains, but pretty big percentage gains uh, coming from four dollars up to almost seven and that would put it at its all-time high so i thought that this was a pretty easy choice honestly i thought all of these were um fairly obvious though just because i thought that the cards were too good and the artworks were too good but that's what we have for now um let's take a look at we'll come back here this is all on tcg player if you guys aren't familiar uh, we're just searching illustration rares only We'll be pulling up some of these charts here, and I'm going to tell you guys my biggest picks as we go through, and kind of what I think they're going to do a little more long term. We're talking like years down the road, um, but obviously we'll start with the big dog here. We'll take a look at the Magic Harp, and if you guys have watched any of my other videos, you do know that currently I I would advise against this card. Uh, just because I do think that Paldea is going to end up getting a heavy reprint. Now it is possible that that doesn't happen, but I think if we're following historical events of what has happened in the past, that that is very likely. I also think that the print quality will improve when they do this reprint, so I would stay away from the Magikarp. I don't have this card uh, in English. I, I bought it in Japanese in a 10. It was like 60 bucks for PSA 10 in Japanese, and I'm happy with that for now. If the English price drops like to where I think it drop can drop, um, I definitely think this is going to be a sub $100 card. Uh, after the reprint, I could see it going down between the sixty and eighty dollar range. Once again, th I, th none of this is a guarantee by any any um, you know way, shape, or form. It could not get reprinted, and it could just continue to rise. So, um, yeah, that's the Magic Uh Next up, we have some you know. There's quite a few. So this is obviously the only one over a hundred, but we got a few over forty here. And the uh, the Groudon, I think that long term this card because of this artwork and how good it is like we'll pull up the one year chart so obviously we just hit it came out of the gate you know at and it peaked around 40 but then it just peaked around 60 bucks i do think that long term even at 47 dollars, i think that this card could potentially have a lot of room to run and i do think that this would be be a card worth investing if we're talking five years down the road potentially just because obviously legendary and amazing artwork i don't think you can go wrong uh with this with this card just my opinion but i think um i'm gonna say that you know five years down the road i could see this being uh 80 ish at least somewhere in that range i, I could definitely see that happening uh we have the eevee here next up and uh, I've kind of talked about this before. I, I put this kind of in the same line with the Greninja, and I, I will admit, I always am happy to admit when I was wrong, by the way. I try and be very transparent on the channel. Uh, I was wrong about the Greninja because it had a similar uh, chart like this. It came out hot and then dipped and then came back up again. 
I don't think this card should be quite this much, but I do understand why this is very popular because this is one of the cards that I was looking to pick up. I'm still not wanting to pick it up at this price point, um, but but Twilight has surpassed um, all my expectations. So as a set, this is kind of an outlier to me. Um, so yeah, I, I picture this card dropping down uh, for more recent and then long term maybe getting back up into these prices. That's just my opinion, and I could very much be wrong, but um, I would stay away from the Eevee. The Raichu, you know, at, at 43, I feel like is a fair price, and, you know, that... Mm, I would maybe stay away from that one. It's it's in the Paldea. It's the same thing as the Magikarp a little, so I probably would. While it's a great-looking card, I would stay away from it. Now, if you're looking for a card to pick up for a long-term hold... I greatly believe that this Tyranitar is going to be one. Uh, I, it is from Paldea as well, so, you know, reprints in mind here. But if we pull up the one year here, so obviously, same thing. We just hit a one year high at 45, and it retraced back down to 34, which I think it would be a good entry point. I could see this being, you know, uh, 50, 60 down the road in a few years, which would be doing really well if you're getting it at the $34 mark. So, um I don't think you can go wrong anywhere in here, personally. Obviously, if you guys could have gotten it back back when it was low, that would have been the play. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So, next up, uh, this is actually kind of interesting. I just wanted to pull this up. Um, this Charmander card is on a little bit of an uptick here. 30 bucks for the Charmander, which is kind of crazy. And if you if we pull up the one year like so, I would say I do think that 151 is English is ripe for a reprint. I we talked about this in the last video, but I don't think that you can go wrong uh, picking up any of these cards long term. I I don't know what the long term value is. It depends on the print run, but because it's such a desired set that you know I could picture that. I, I don't know how high the, like this particular card can go over time. So if I'm looking for like biggest percentage, it's not going to be the Charmander, but I don't think you could go wrong with that. Now, another one that I think will do will perform well long term, and we've seen it hit some interesting prices is the Ghastly. If we look at the one year chart, it had that like it was at yeah 16, it went up to 30, dipped all the way back down, but then recently it passed that original, so it's at it was at its all time high and at $26, but because of the other Pokemon in here, even with the Meowth, but specifically uh, Gengar and Haunter and everything, in this card, I could easily see this being 40 or 50 bucks, give it five years or more. So that would be doubling your money. So if you're looking at picking up the Ghastly, you know, I don't think that this is a bad time to pick, be picking up Ghastly. Uh, we're not going to pull up these charts here, but uh, it's kind of the same sentiment for uh, Charmander. For Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Bulbasaur, and Charmeleon, uh, it, they all go together. They're all in the same basket, in my opinion. So long term, they're going to perform really well. And I think that those are great pickups. Uh, the Steelix we already touched on. Yvelto we already touched on. Wartortle is in that same basket. Uh, this Pikachu from 151, uh, we'll pull up the chart and see what it's looking like, but... It, kind of the same thing. I do think that long term, um, I could easily see this. Uh, where are we at? So we're at 17 right now. Average median price is 20 bucks. Um, it's not at its all time high, which is at 23. I could picture this easily creeping into the 30s, being a 30 dollar card, uh, depending on how things shake out. So, um, you know, I'm trying to. I'm also trying to be a little conservative with some of my. Uh, price estimations here but it will be interesting to look back on this video uh in the future then let's see so we touched on these the chancy so here's a few cards that i'm going to say we're starting to get into the cards that i think are uh, have bigger potentials starting with the chancy i do think that that this card with this with the other pokemon the you know ditto Psyduck, snorlax and uh blissey in the back and it's, you know, it just hit its all-time high and came off of that. But uh, I could picture this settling in the in the $25, $25 range uh, in the future, uh, depending, which would be a pretty pretty good gain, in my opinion. 
Uh, now, there's a few that I would bet on a bit more heavy, and these are two of them right here. We'll pull these up. One of them is the Ralts, and because it goes with, uh, we'll talk about the Curlia when that card comes up as well. But the Ralts and the, Gar the Curlia and the Gardevoir all go together, and I think that as a set that they're very slept on. And same thing, just hit our all-time high here, retrace back down to 15. But I could picture this being between 25 and 30 bucks. Um, after Scarlet and Violet is long sold out, it's definitely, that's being on the conservative side. But I think maybe if I had to pick one, like my big one that I would do, put all my money in, it might be this Dragonair. And you guys might not agree with that, but just because of this, I do think that this artwork is really nice. And this card has been somewhat consistent between 16 to 18 dollars ish depending and it's just kind of bounced around in this channel and i think that it's due for a breakout uh, i i could picture this you know jumping up to eventually being around 30 even up to 40 dollars potentially i just think it's underrated and underappreciated for you know the gen 1 fans just my opinion there so take that for what you will um next up We've touched on this card before in some past videos, but we'll pull up the chart and see kind of where it's, what it's doing. This is the uh, Sprigatito, and I've talked about the popularity of the show and the power that that has. So kids are growing up on this, this starter, and if you look at this chart right here, we're pretty much at our all-time high, or the one-year high, at least. We can't see back further than that, but I don't think it was that high. Um, Sprigatito is like the main Pokemon that the from the new show so if you haven't seen it check it out horizons is on netflix but um yeah i think this is going to be no-brainer 20s 20 25 30 low 30s easily give it five years uh i know it's from paldea so reprints in mind um same thing with the fue coco i put it in the same exact category um definitely pickups um the heracross as well it's worth, I think that there's no brainer. It could be in the 20s. Same thing with the Sudowoodo. These cards have had recent run ups, but another card I would put a lot of money on that has had a, has been on quite a little bit of a run. Uh, and I have touched on this video uh, in a past video. I'd have to go back. I'm not sure what, what time frame that was, but it is not at its one year high at all. So this is from an underrated set, Obsidian Flames, but it is getting a little bit of attention here recently. You could have picked this up for five bucks, and now it's over doubled. But I do think that this card easily, easily can surpass this one-year high. I think that is entirely possible. Um, I did pull this card, and it looks great in person, and I just think that popular Pokemon, Gen 1, really great artwork. I could see this per surpassing this... Um, you know, once Obsidian Flames, same thing is sold out. If it wasn't as popular of a set, cause it hasn't been getting a lot of it. People don't really like Obsidian Flames. I'm not sure why. I know it's not the strongest, but anyways, let's pretend that that is sold out and long gone. This could be a $30 card. I stand by that. Um, so yeah, the Morpeko, um, I, we've talked about this before. I like the artwork and I can picture this, it, you know, this rising up for sure. I don't want to give an exact price. On, on that card but um, could definitely be good now we're getting into this is the second page gets into there's some sleepers here I think that have some potential as well and we'll touch on those but uh, I wanted to touch on the Curlia real quick it's the same thing it's the Gardevoir and the Ralts you can see obviously the progression here and you know we pull up the one year here we're at one year just under one year highs so I don't see how this couldn't, you know, it's at 11, 12 bucks. I, this could easily be in the 20s, same thing, 20, 25, 30. I think that a lot of these cards, also you have to keep in mind that if we see, if we end up seeing another boom, like we just saw for Sword and Shield a few years down the road, and it all happens for Scarlet and Violet, all of these cards are going to get a lift, and that's kind of what happened. It was like a mad frenzy. And I do think that that's very possible for this generation. But I'm just trying to touch on, you know, specific cards. And while we have looked at some of these before, obviously 
151 I think has a lot of strength. I can see Polyworld being more than a $10 card. Um, Psyduck could be more than $10, although I wish that... I like Actually, I like this, what they did, but I feel like he's too small in the picture. I would have liked to have seen him a little bit bigger. Uh, another one I've touched on before is I do think that this card is extremely undervalued, the Meryl, because I think it is absolutely adorable, and I think the artwork is too good. We're seeing it get a little bit of some love here. If we pull up the one year, you know, we're at it's one year high, but this card could easily be 20, 20 to thirty dollars from Paldea. I think it's it's just slept on, honestly. And that's like on the low end. Like I think it's too good. You gotta. That's just just my opinion. Um, let me know if you guys think I, I am off my rocker on some of these or not. Now, another one that I would probably bet heavily on. And I think is very interesting from a newer set is this Infernape from Twilight Masquerade. You know, evolution of one of the starters. Okay. Came out of the gate, hit up to eight, back down to five, and now we're just under its all time high. And if you look at this artwork, you know, same thing. I see minimum $20 range in the future from Twilight, possibly more. Twilight's been holding really well, it's been a great set. You know, I don't think you guys can go wrong. Uh, also, you know, a few that are here that I wanted to touch on, pretty much a lot of these at the bottom right here. I think that these have some potential breakout ability uh, to move up into the, uh, you know, $20 range, potentially over time. Uh, one of them, so obviously, we'll pull up the Slowpoke here. Oops, wrong one there, sorry. So Slowpoke popular gen 1 pokemon i think scarlet and violet base is slept on honestly i do like i like this card and maybe not 30 dollars for this card i could see definitely 15 which would be like almost doubling 15 to possibly touching 20s you know it's never really been that it's been kind of consistent it had a big little drop right here but it's kind of held pretty steady over the past year but you know popular pokemon and then another card from here that I would probably bet pretty heavily on, just because I think it's just too good of a Pokemon and too good of an artwork. I really like this this style that they chose. It's great. Um, you know, one year we're yeah we're down from our one year high. Paldea, another Paldea card. You know, um, solid set. Honestly, once you start to look into it, but um, I could picture this card tripling, over tripling. 20 25 you know 21 dollars would be about tripling 25 easy long term when when paldea is sold out and this is way in the past easily um another one that i think too you know is this this nitto king a lot of people are going to be master setting 151 including myself and maybe this isn't the best rendition of nitto king i do think that when 151 English is kind of sunsetting um, with product availability, I could see this being a $20 card as well, you know? So if if you're getting it for 7 bucks, pick up a few copies, you'd be doing pretty well for yourself. And it is possible that a lot of these cards end up going higher. Also the Magby, I think the Magby is too good. Magby and Cleffa being at 7 these could be $15 cards for sure. Uh, Frigibax I'm not sure on. We'll jump into page three. I think this is where things start to kind of cool off uh, a little, which is expected. There's a lot of... Um, okay, well, here's the Arbok. So we touched on the Arbok. Um, between these cards right here, yeah, things things are definitely cooling off. Um, I'm betting on Gen 1 Pokemon for the most part. We're not going to pull up the chart on every single one of these because this video is going long. We're at 19 minutes. We're just going to kind of speed through some of these. But I do think that uh, Caterpie from 151 could, could double in price. I think that Pinsir could double in price. People are going to chase these. Um, I think Quaxley is undervalued. Yeah, same thing from the show, right? That's my reasoning for that. Uh, from the show, again, Florigato, the Machoke from 151. I could picture all of these cards doubling in price. Um, now, me personally, I actually like this Paldean Tauros a lot as well. I could I could picture this uh, slowly doubling over time. And Omanyte, mm, 
definitely seeing some moves on Omnite just because it's from 151. But what I start start to see is when you guys really start looking at these is that, and I've said it before, but Scarlet and Violet era is like the best artwork era we've ever gotten. And I think that artwork wise, these cards are just too good. They're really, really great. Um, now on this page, things start to, things start to get, um, you know, like I said, a little, even more difficult, but, um, we'll, we'll touch on a few here and then we'll kind of wrap it up. You know, there's a few more pages, but there's just too many to go through. So from here, honestly, as I start to look at this, I think I'm going to click on a few of these here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So these would be my five that I would bet on from this, starting with Scizor. I think that this uh, artwork is way too good. I could picture this being between a $10 and $15 card, which would be a huge percentage gain uh, long-term from an undervalued set is also kind of the reason I think that Obsidian Flames is better than people think, and long-term they will want to go back to it to pull Charizards and pull some of these other cool cards. Another same card... I like really like this artwork. You got the Weedles, the Glooms chilling. Uh, same thing, Obsidian Flames, right? Um, undervalued set. So same thing, $10, $15 range, long term. And it's I guess this is a common theme. This is what I picked out. Uh, Pidgey from Obsidian Flames, same thing. Uh, people might want to complete the set of the, the evolution line here. $10, $15, bucks, totally doable. Um, then uh, just a little bit of a, another Paldea card that's just kind of sneaking in there. Um, the Pyroar at four bucks, I could see this being between 10 and 15. Just, it's just a cool Pokemon, cool card, cool art. Look at all the, the Lit Leos and the, everything in the background, right? Then last one we're going to touch on. Temporal Forces. Now this has had a run up, uh, recently, but it has, it's not at its, uh, one year or all, all time high, but the Lickitung, I think is, uh, just maybe not the most popular Gen 1 Pokemon, but really adorable art. I could picture this hitting 10 bucks, which should be over doubling long term. So that is going to do it for this one, guys. I do apologize that this uh, video went so long, but I did want to touch on this because we just made a video um, yesterday about the SIRs, So I wanted to dive into the IRs. If you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button while you're down there. Hit the like button, leave me a comment. Let me know if you think I'm absolutely crazy. If you agree with some of my takes, um, but yeah, I try and be transparent. I try and make daily content and yeah, that's it. So if you guys enjoy this, uh, you know, I'll catch you guys in the next one and remember it was a never a phase.